Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here with Build Up the Church. Hope you're doing super good. This is a devotional word for May 23rd, 2024. In John chapter 10, Jesus is describing himself as the good shepherd, the one who lays down his life for the sheep. And he speaks in metaphorical terms and in ways that first century Jews would have easily understood. The Old Testament speaks of the shepherds of Israel as being those men who were assigned the responsibility of taking care of God's people in a spiritual sense. There were good shepherds, there were bad shepherds, there were faithful shepherds, unfaithful shepherds. One of the ways that the rural shepherd would take care of his sheep was uh, if he was away from a town, if there was a pen or some kind of enclosure, he would lead the sheep into the enclosure and then he would lay across the opening. He would be, in essence, the door of the sheepfold. If anybody wanted to get in, they had to go over or through him. If a wild animal wanted to get in, they had to go over or through him. He was the one that gave access. He was the one that permitted uh, the sheep to, to leave and find pasture. He was the one that defended the sheep, and he said the sheep knew his name. He called his sheep, and they knew him by name. We pick up the story here in John chapter 10, verse 7. Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And so Jesus is saying, the flock of God is comprised of people that have come through the door of Jesus Christ. One cannot gain access to the family of God, to the flock of God, unless you come through the door, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus would go on to give his life for the sins of the world. We are not allowed or given access into the family of God when we are still guilty in our sins. But Jesus Christ came to pay the penalty for our sins. That seems like such a foreign concept to so many. He was the substitute. If you were convicted of a crime and had to go to jail for six months or pay a fine and you had no money, you found yourself in jail, but what if the jailer came and said, you're free to go, and you said, how can that happen? I'm guilty. And he says, yes, you were guilty, but your loving relative paid your fine, you're free to go. And that's what Jesus did as he died on the cross for the sins of the entire world. His life so precious, so valuable, so highly esteemed before heaven, that his life, his single life, and this is an, it's an amazing thing to think about, one single life so holy, so pure, so precious, that could pay for all of the sins of all of humanity over all of the ages. It's an amazing thing to think about. When we come to Christ and we accept him and we ask for forgiveness for our sins, we're born again, we have a new nature, we're forgiven, and we are given access into the family of God or the flock of God. And so Jesus said, I'm the door. You can't come into this family, into this flock, unless you come through me. Unless you come through me uh, by means of believing in what I did on the cross, that I was executed, but I was raised from the dead three days later, and I died for your sins. And so Jesus says, I'm the door. He says this, all who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, and the sheep did not hear them. Now, it's a well-known fact in rural communities and, and in with amongst shepherds, that you can actually be known by your sheep by your voice. You can actually call to them and they will come to you. Uh, somebody else could say the exact same words, but they would not come because it's not the shepherd calling. And so Jesus is saying this, if anyone enters by me, he'll be saved. He'll go out and go in and out and find pasture. He says this then, in contrast, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I'm so glad that Jesus is the door, if you will. And think metaphorically now. The Bible would call me one of the lambs of God, one of the sheep of God. I'm part of the flock of God. The thieves of this world, the wicked men, the wicked women, are the ones who want to do damage to my life or damage to the church uh, that I pastor. Their intention is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus is primarily speaking about Satan and the demonic realm. That's Satan's intention, is to steal from you, steal your joy, steal your confidence, steal your psychological health, steal your body away from you. 
to kill and to destroy, to wreak havoc in every way that he can, to lie, to deceive, to, to tempt you, to cause you to turn away from God, to cause you to go into the world and live an ungodly life, an out-of-control life, a life of perhaps addiction or anger or violence or promiscuity that would bring you uh, sexually transmitted diseases or some other kind of infectious disease. Satan is out to destroy people. Please uh, don't be mistaken about that. The Bible says very clearly that Satan uh, is, is a, a living being and he has a following. And he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said this, in contrast, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly or have it to the full. So let's review here. Jesus says, I'm the door of the sheep. I can't even come to God unless I come through Christ. Others are thieves and robbers. And the child of God learns to, to recognize the voice of the shepherd. It might be a little harder at the beginning, but the she the, as the sheep stay with the, the shepherd, as the Christian stays with Jesus, his voice via the Holy Spirit becomes a more familiar voice and we are less easily led astray and less easily deceived. Jesus said, I'm the door, verse 9. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will go in and out and find pasture. May I say the testimony of my life, I'm in a safe place and then God may lead me out to, to find a pasture, to go on adventures, to find ways to serve him, to meet other people. And then I go back to my safe place again. It's all metaphorical, but it's easily understood. And then there's that wicked one who wants to kill, steal, and destroy, Satan. But Jesus said, I've come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. It's amazing to me how many people think that Jesus came to be a killjoy, that he came to throw unreasonable, inhumane uh, rules upon our lives that just take away the joy of life. I can honestly say, once again, personal testimony, I have never been more joyful in my life uh, as I have been since I started following Jesus. And every year, and, and it seems like every month and every week, it is getting better. Is there, are there problems? Sure there are. But I can say this, I have abundant life. Another way to translate that is that they may have life to the fullest. And so Jesus offers that. If you're a Christian, stay in the flock of God. Let, stay behind the protective hand of Jesus Christ. Know that he's got your back. If you're not a Christian, if you've never said yes to Jesus, he asks you and I ask you. If you enter by him, if you join the flock of God, you'll be saved and you'll have all the access to this abundant life that you can grow in and experience. Dear friends, God knows what you need. He created us and he wants to fill your life with goodness and with joy. So, he invites you, I invite you. Consider Jesus. Thanks for watching.